Good morning all. In the previous week, we started our discussion on the fourth module of Geotechnical Engineering 2 and we started off with the definition of a shallow foundation, the types of shallow foundations in practice in India and then we moved on to a combined footing, the definition of a combined footing, which are the cases where you can expect combined footing and later on we uh, moved to uh, the design aspects, the geotechnical design aspects of a rectangular combined footing. Now based on what we have discussed, we will try to solve a numerical problem to design a rectangular combined footing. Now in this present question, it's quite simple and one of the simplest that you can expect for this kind of a kind of a numerical problem. Now you have two column loads A and B transferring loads 600 kN and 900 kN respectively to a rectangular combined footing. You are asked to proportion the footing with the following data. The width of column A is 30 cm by 30 cm in plan and B is 40 by 40 cm. Allowable soil pressure is given as 100 kPa and the center to center distance between the columns is 5 meters. A projection beyond the center of the column B, which is a heavier column, should not exceed 1.15 meter. However, there is no projection provision beyond column A. So uh, just go through the question, read it again, pause your video and try to see what the real case is. Now I have a schematic picture here. You have two sets of column. One is 30 by 30 centimeter and another is 40 by 40 centimeter. Of course the right side you have the heavier column which carries 900 kN and we call that as column B and to the left side you have 30 by 30 carrying a load of 600 kN and we call it as column A and uh, as given in the question you have a limitation for projection on one side and you don't have the limitation on the other side but uh, it should not exceed 1.15 meter that's given as well so a section would look like this center of gravity passes through this line for a and b and this distance from column b's center is given as 1.15 meters so center to center distance is 5 meter center to center i mean not center to center but the distance of the slab projection from the center of b is 1.15 meters so apart from these geometrical dimensions you are given with the allowables for the pressure 100 kPa, which means the total load carried by the two columns combined will be safely carried by the soil if the pressure is less than 100 kPa, which means you should provide an area which will safely have a stress less than 100 kPa based on these two loads. Now you have two loads here. 900 and 600 like this so to start with you have to find the total load q which is the sum of 900 and 600 and of course like we discussed in the previous video on its theoretical side we said that the load is taken as a reaction here just like the story of balancing a book so you have q marked upward which is this numerical sum of 900 and 600. So your intention is to proportionate the footing in such a way that Q passes through the centroid of the designed combined footing. So of course you have X bar marked here which is the distance of Q from the center of A here, column A. It's not mandatory to take X bar to column A. You can take to column B as well. It's all about solving the moment equation. So taking moment about A, you have X bar is equal to Q2 by Q into X2, from which Q2 is known, Q is known, X2 is known. So that gives you the value of X bar or the distance of the load from center of column A. So X bar turns out to be 3 meters. Step number 2 is to find the area required. 
for which you are given with the safe bearing capacity or the allowable pressure and the total load Q from which you can estimate the area required which is length into breadth as equal to Q by SBC. So total load Q is 1500 and SBC is 100 kilopascal. So checking consistency of the unit you get area required to be 15 meter square which means length multiplied by the breadth of the combined footing after your design process is completed should be at least 15 meter square so that the pressure will be less than 100 kilopascal and we know that Q should pass through the centroid of the designed combined footing which means since it's since it's a rectangular footing the centroid will of course be at the middle of the length L or L by 2 will be equal to the distance of the load Q to the outside phase of the column A which is X bar plus 300 millimeter by 2. In short L will be equal to twice X bar plus 0 0.15 meter X bar plus 0 0.15 meter which means 6.3 meters and from which you get breadth B as area by 6.3 so that's approximately 2.38 meters which means when you provide a length of 6.3 meters and a breadth of 2.38 meters you will get an area of 15 meters satisfying all the conditions given in the question about the limitations of slab projection and the stresses that will be beneath the footing will be 100 kilopascals which is on the safer side so uh, you provide a rectangular combined footing with the round of figure 6.3 meters and 2.4 meters instead of 2.38 meters which means the area provided is greater than the area required and of course the stress generated from that design will be less than 100 kilopascal and the footing is on the safer side so uh, that is on a nutshell how you design a rectangle combined footing of course this one being the simplest one now we'll move to the discussion of the trapezoidal combined footing the design theory it's quite similar to the previous discussion we had on the combined footing in rectangular shape except for the fact that q2 is less than q1 here which means q2 here q1 here and the heavier column doesn't have the luxury to project the slab outwards so there's a limitation there so in that case we'll be forced to move to trapezoidal combined footing the first step is the same you find the total load q which is q1 plus q2 and from the safe bearing capacity of the soil given you estimate the base area required or the least area to be provided to have on the safer side A is equal to Q by SBC where Q is equal to sum of Q1 plus Q2 now the next step is to locate the line of action of the resultant load in the previous example we had arrived at X bar likewise in here you'll have to take the moment about any one of the column in this case I have marked X bar to the column to the left side center line is at a distance of X bar from Q and I've marked a distance X dash which is equal to X bar plus B1 by 2 B1 being the breadth of the column now taking moments you get Q into X bar is equal to Q2 into X2 right Q into x bar is equal to q2 into x2 just multiplying the force with the lever arm and you take the anti-clockwise as negative and clockwise as positive or vice versa so you get an equation connecting x bar and x2 like this x bar is equal to q2 x2 by q the next step is to find x dash which is equal to x bar plus b1 by 2 x bar plus b1 by 2 gives you x dash now for a trapezoidal footing and for a strap footing how you differentiate is that if 
the x dash that you have obtained falls between l by 2 and l by 3, we can go for a trapezoidal footing. If x dash is still lesser than l by 3, you will be forced to move to a strap footing. Strap footing is the one that you have discussed in the theoretical, uh, in the theory side in the first video. That's another shallow foundation which is connected by a beam or a strap. So if your x dash turns out to be somewhere in between l by 2 and l by 3, you can fix trapezoidal footing. Again, our job now is to balance the trapezoidal footing just like balancing the book. Right? So you have q here. You need to proportion the rectangular footing in such a way that Q passes through the centroid. Or you should decide B1 and B2 and L in such a way that the, the trapezium thus formed will have the centroid passing through Q, where there will be a balancing. So you need to determine B1 and B2 from the geometric properties as given below. We know the area of a trapezium as B1 plus B2 by 2 into L. And we know the center, the centroid of the trapezium is given by the expression B1 plus 2 B2 by B1 plus B2 into L by 3. Our x dash, which is marked here, is equal to B1 plus 2 B2 by B1 plus B2 into L by 3. Now I've added a term from psi b1 especially to add a cautionary note. You cannot buy hard this equation. You need to have this equation along with this, this sentence. If it's from b2, the terms in this equation gets flipped back and forth. So you will have to take care of this. b1 plus 2b2 by b1 plus b2 is applicable when the distance is from psi b1. Nonetheless, uh, we have two equations, area and centroid distance. So solving these equations, you will get B1 and B2 and provide a value which is a round of figure for the length and the breadth and check whether total load Q divided by area provided is less than the safe bearing capacity. So uh, that is a principle for the for the design of a trapezoidal combined footing. It's quite the same thing that we have discussed for the rectangle combined footing except for the fact that the centroid has a different equation and it's not at the half of the total length. So a trapezium doesn't have the centroid at half length from either side. Instead it has a it has an expression. Now of course this expression if you forget to have this expression you can of course at any time take a strip and integrate if you are good in integration, you can solve that within one or two minutes.